This is the Ronin of Philosophy, where I took a look at metaphysical ideas and I tried to examine them from a philosophical and objective point of view. There is a common belief in America that it was established by newcomers, and that because it was established by newcomers and immigrants of all classes, cultures, and belief systems, that it should be welcoming to all immigrants who come into the country, no matter what the age or era. And for the record, I am one of those bleeding hearts who supports letting refugees in. And I also believe that it is one of the things that does make America great, it's diversity. However, there is also another part of that story that is not often told and explains why one minority group can side against another as has happened so often in our country's history. Now, I first wanna say that it's a hardcore fact that Native Americans were here first and that's never gonna change and that their history and their story in the history of the country after immigrants started coming over deserves just as much respect and attention as every other race or culture that has come here and that is still here. That being said though, regarding immigrants, while it's true that much of the history of the country was written by immigrants, it is also written by immigrants that were in conflict with each other and goes back as far as when Caucasian peoples first arrived here. The first immigrants were people looking for religious freedom to practice their own brand of Protestant Christianity. However, these people were from Germany, Britain, and the Netherlands. So the baggage of national heritage and rivalry, coupled with various Protestant religious sects and some Catholics, naturally produced some conflict. This only increased as America began to establish itself as a nation and no longer a colony of the British Isles. Children and grandchildren of those first refugees began referring to themselves as natives of America. Native Americans apparently not really accounting for most of them. Wonder why. Still, I hear many people today talk about the idea that the founding fathers built this country and its constitution for freedom and letting people in. However, I highly doubt that what our nation looks like now is what they intended or intended or meant. Immigrants who came over were from Western Europe, and slaves brought over from Africa. And by the 19th century, people who came from other parts of Europe were beginning to enter, having different values and different faiths. According to some estimates, over 1 million people by 1850. These new groups began creating religious schisms as well, forming their own communities. Each new group was seeking new opportunities. Much of these conflicts, however, were lessened by the expansion of immigrants and European Americans moving westward. The bigger the space, the less chance of interaction, and thus the less chance of conflict between them. However, westward expansion meant more conflict with the Native Americans. The idea was that the space allowed for each group to carve out their own areas where they can live peacefully and separately. I guess you can call it a kind of self-imposed segregation, if you will. While more space did create less conflict between those particular groups at least, it also led to more ignorance and thus more latent prejudice as well, because they knew nothing about other cultures or other peoples outside of their own or what their ancestors had passed on. This was not the case in urban cities. As the 19th century progressed, many people, some now second and third generation descendants, or others just came off the boat, came over looking for jobs. Unlike the frontier, this basic need brought different groups into close proximity with each other and began forcing more battles, with competition and racism to fueling the rivalries. Ad inherent differences were easily identified to tell who was from where, like modern gang signs and other differences that are often exaggerated and caricaturized. After 1880, a new influx of immigrants was arriving from other parts of Eastern and Southern Europe in large numbers. Italians, Sicilians, Slavs, and so on. And former African slaves, since this is after the Civil War, now began entering into this volatile mix as well. Sucked in together by the gravitational pull of a land of opportunity, they came into conflict with those descendants who now saw themselves as native-born. Even the western frontier was no longer safe, as Chinese immigrants became coming over via San Francisco from the Orient. For those already here, the American tradition of immigrant opportunity was now getting out of hand, with those people often forgetting their ancestral history or somehow believing themselves exempt or special. 
things eventually got to the point where both state and federal governments began implementing immigration and control laws to ban or control new elements of immigration. Arguably, the Chinese got the worst of it because this lasted for decades, going into the middle of the 20th century. Still though, the more people heard about America as a land of opportunity, with the conditions in their own homelands worsening, the more different races, cultures, and beliefs began arriving on both sides of this continent. The more that arrived, the more vicious the competition. And the more vicious the competition, the more volatile the cross-cultural interactions became. Now, since the 1960s somewhat reset our version of American history, we often easily forget that our progressive attitudes were near non-existent until very recently. From a historical point of view, progressivism is still in its infancy. In contrast, racism was the accepted norm and people sought the company of their own if they could help it. Different groups seeking to prosper and live their lives saw other groups as threats to their own survival. These groups would display the same hostility and racism that lived in the more prominent and more dominant white Anglo-Saxon Protestant population that was opposed upon them. In fact, this would be the standard until about the 1960s with the Civil Rights Movement. And even today, that hostility has not entirely gone away. With the election of President Trump in 2016, on one of his banners of banning or lim heavily limiting immigrants from Mexico and other Latin countries, as well as several African and Arab countries as well. And the fact that so many people, half the nation's population jumped on this, tells you just how pervasive it still is, even 100, 200 years later. I think John Stewart said it best when he described it as a get off my lawn attitude that essentially each new group that comes over struggles and makes it in America then develops the same attitude that they struggled against towards other people who are now trying to make it as well. Again, get off my lawn. So this begs the question, what does that tell us about diversity and the American tradition? What it tells us is that it is both a truth and also a lie. A truth in a sense that we should always support helping out our fellow human beings and those who are struggling and trying to make it just like we would want to be treated that way if we were in that same position. It is never okay to treat someone as less than human being or to create laws or institutions that make it harder for them to succeed where others do not have to deal with that, regardless of what race or culture they come from. However, it is also a lie in a sense that there, there is no and has never been a harmonious blending of different peoples and cultures that made America what it is today. Rather, what made America what it is today is conflict and anger and hatred and a competition between many of these groups who are trying to make it against the powers of the circumstances they were living under that made making it a very difficult endeavor to begin with. And I think much of this is the fault of basic human nature rather than numbers, nationality, or even creed people will naturally tend to seek out their own, what's familiar, especially when they're in unknown lands where survival is paramount before human rights. People are creatures of habit, at ease with the familiar and recognizable. People want orders, legal, moral, mental, or physical. Against these, anything that is different from us that we don't recognize and is in close proximity is automatically and on a biological level, I believe, considered a threat. And any distinguishable differences, such as a person's name and how it's said, what a person looks like, or even something as simple as how they walk or talk, makes it only that much easier to mark them as threats. America has struggled so hard with the idea of differences because its very existence stands in direct contradiction to these fundamental elements of nature, not only human nature, but the tide of human history as well, which has always been about groups competing with each other. Honestly, it's truly amazing or just a fucking miracle that we've even gotten as far as a society. Does this negate any of the positives that have happened as well? Absolutely not, and hence the conflict. But at the same time, it would be just as wrong to ignore these negative aspects as well that have played such a heavy hand and shaping, at the very least, much of the conflict that goes on today within our country. All that being said, whether you believe we're here by divine providence, 
or just American stubbornness, America is still here. Yes, the progressive spirit that we should embrace different people is new, not even a century old, I would say. But at the same time, it's a clear improvement from what happened before. It's what makes this shit work in the first place. It's taken us many, many generations and many, many decades and a ghastly amount of human lives and injustices to innumerous account. But American ideals of equality are becoming more and more of a reality. Many of us are finally realizing that making diversity work is better than the prejudice and provincial thinking that has ruled our perspective and much of how we see, see other people. So essentially, yes, America is built on conflict between immigrants and between native peoples, and that the descendants of those peoples now try to work or try to build a peaceful coexistence and strive to live by a higher standard as well as eliminate that conflict as well. But be aware, there will be culture clashes as long as new immigrants come over, not because that there should be, but because that is basic human nature. Beliefs may be seen as strange, either too liberal, too conservative, or just too alien. They may see a secularized America as hedonistic or lacking any kind of spiritual or moral substance. Or they might see America as too divisive to actually coexist or work for them in the first place. But the hope that all of America needs to emphasize is that we have to work those out, not run from them or resort to violence. The American true dream is not being happy with the white picket fence, but overcoming our base instincts and prejudice that is part of being human. Those elements that run those injustices and those biased institutions and everything that many Americans hate about America. We must deal with those and conquer those in order to establish the true American dream of what hopefully the founders hoped it would be.